All right, today we have a great project for you. We are going to carve out a digital terrain. And there's a lot of information online about doing digital terrains. And I found a certain method that works really great and I wanna share it with you here today. For this project, we'll be using our Creator Pro, which is a three horsepower electro-cooled spindle. And we also have a Creator that's a regular two horsepower spindle. And there's lots of options available for both of these machines. We'll be assisted by QGIS, which is free and open source, as well as GIMP if you don't have Photoshop. So we'll be using both of these programs. So head on over to the QGIS website and download and install QGIS. And then also go over, if you don't have an image editor, uh, you might wanna go to GIMP and get their software. GIMP is the next best thing to Photoshop, so there you go. We'll be gathering most of our information from the national map. And this is a source where we can get uh, digital elevation models. And in this case, we're going to be doing Catalina little island off the off the west coast here and when we download information from the the site we'll be getting a geo tiff and a geo tiff isn't really friendly with image editors so we'll bring that into qgis and we'll be able to see it as a, a dem a digital elevation model which is a grayscale representation of blacks being the lowest point and the whites being the highest points and we'll also learn how to correct some errors that happen along the way. As you can see here, here's an example of some edge artifacting uh, around the island. And that comes directly from the uh, digital elevation model, the grayscale dem, and we'll learn how to fix that. Okay, so let's jump into it and go to the national map. You can see up here where it's the apps.nationalmap.gov viewer and these links will be in the description so no worries there and here you can just sort of move in and out of the uh, the map although this map is not the one we necessarily want what we want to do is come up here and come over and go to data download and we'll click on that and once we're in here we have a little more control over what we're doing so I'm going to just use my scroll wheel here on the mouse and scroll in and find Catalina and you can see it's right there, okay? So you can see a weird line around here, and that's what I was referring to in the artifacts. In the, um, the DEM, uh, that's the only information that's included. Uh, they bypassed all of this uh, water area because it isn't really relevant to land. So what we wanna do is we want to get a elevation product that's called a 3DEP. And we'll click in this box over here under elevation products called 3DEP. And we, by default, we see that the one third arc second is chosen, which is actually a pretty good size um, for the model. The one ninth arc second is a little bit more. It's, it's a little more, has a little higher resolution, but the third of an arc second is gonna be fine for what we're doing. Okay, so what I wanna do now is just click on the polygon up here click once on the screen, come down, and we'll just sort of select that island and double click, and that'll set the box. And we'll go ahead and search products. So I'll click on search products, and this gives me a tile, which would be basically one tile. Now, if I scroll out a little bit, you can see that that tile, as I mouse over it, covers quite a bit of area that we're not gonna use. So anyway, just something to be aware of. So on this case, I would just hit the download link and I would go ahead and save this to wherever you, you would save your uh, stuff to. In this case, I've already downloaded this TIFF file. So you might wanna go to the area that you wanna uh, create a, a train for and you know click the download link and download. Now, there will be times, I'm going to go back here to the data sets and I wanna clear the geometry. Say for example, you're doing something that's a little wider, that has a little more space. Like if I go up here to Lake Michigan and I go ahead and do the same thing, create a polygon, come down here, and let's say I just wanna get this side over here. I'll go ahead and do that, double click, and then I'll go ahead and see that the one third arc second is kind of the standard. 
So I'll go ahead and search products. And this should return a number of different tiles. And so as you see here, there's lots of different tiles. So they all kind of uh, will go back in place. Uh, the QGIS program automatically arranges these for you. Uh, so if you need a section of just say all of these tiles or whatever, go ahead and download all of those, put them in a folder, and you'll be good to go. And I'll show you how to work with those as soon as we get into uh, QGIS next. Okay, so anyway, that's the basic process of doing your downloads uh, to get this information. Now, we're not going to be able to read those geotiffs in an image editing program, so let's jump over into QGIS. When you first launch QGIS, this will be the main interface. It looks fairly simple and it's very plain, but don't let that fool you. This is a very powerful program. So over here, you can see you have a browser and then your layer area. And we have layer styling over here. Now, if I were to come down here and click this little box right here, that's gonna send me to a couple of other options. But right now, it's best just to make sure that this box is uh, highlighted and on and that you see layer styling here because in a way that's important. So anyway, you can move these uh, these different interface elements around. But for now, we're just going to leave them the way they are at default. And I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop this geotiff of Catalina. I'm going to bring it right into the interface and there it is. So you can see where here's our other information that we don't really need up at the top here and this little piece at the bottom we don't need. So I'm just going to zoom in on Catalina right here and there it is. So this is pretty basic and really all we have to do in this program to get this out of here as a, as a bitmap file or a JPEG is just come up here and go to project and what we want to do is export and we want to export this map to an image. Now, I found that the best results are just leaving, say, this at default, because right now, um, this is sort of defining the area where I'm in. And it does matter what is on the screen here, so you want to just sort of selectively choose what you want. And in this case, I want to change the resolution up to 900 DPI. Um, that's going to give us a really large image and it's going to reduce really well down to uh, what we need. And, and it, down here, you can leave draw active decorations. There really are none, but draw annotations you can decheck and append geo reference because we don't need any of that. And then go ahead and hit save. And you can give it a name. And I've already done that, so I'm not going to go into any, you know, details on that. Just go ahead and save it uh, to your desktop or wherever your uh, files are. So that is it. And that's all we need to do with this right here. Okay, now here's something really interesting. Now, remember we saw the Grand Haven example on the tiles. I'm going to drag and drop these tiles over here onto the interface. So there are basically a whole bunch, nine different images that are going to make this up. Now you can see here where the grayscale is just really off. Um, all of these are sort of different. So we can fix that. And if we were to do a digital terrain model with everything the way it looks now, there would be some very distinct lines and all sorts of craziness that we don't want. So I'll go up here and just sort of um, collapse this. I don't need to see this uh, band. We'll collapse all of that. And what we can do now with all of these is we can come up and go into our raster and come down into miscellaneous and look for merge. And I'm going to go ahead and merge all of these tiles together. But you have to have an input layer. So we'll go ahead and click on there and you can see that there is all the layers that correspond with those. So we'll just select them all and we'll go ahead and run. So it'll go through, it might take about a minute, minute and a half. Um, you might see some errors there. Um, I don't really know what's going on with that because I don't use this program as much, but in the end, we should have a file that's uh, called merged. 
and this will average and even out all of those black and white grayscale values. So we'll let it do its thing and check and see if it merged. Okay, well there you can see that where we have a merged layer that just showed up down here on the bottom. So what we can do now is just basically close this window and come over here and I'm just going to deselect all of these areas and as I do that you can see where all of the values have been corrected and made very easy. So now I have a really great tile for a digital model of the Grand Haven area. So what I can do now is just come back up in here and go to project uh, and we're going to save this import export. We're going to export this map to an image I'll go like that and I'm going to switch this up to 900 DPI and decheck annotations and georeference and hit save and I'll just save this as test uh, Grand Haven all right test Grand and the desktop and boom now I have a tile that we can pull into uh, into Photoshop and work with from there before we go into vCarve or Aspire. Okay, so I'm in Photoshop now and we'll go ahead and open up that uh, Catalina QGIS 900 DPI image that we saved out and here it is. Now you can see where this image when I brought it in is at 12.5%. So essentially if I just zoom in on this uh, image Let's just zoom in. You can see it just has terrific resolution. Uh, that's only at 39% and I'm not seeing any pixels. So this is really great. So it's a really clean image and there it's at about 120%. So uh, that's the deal. Now you can see that in this image um, that outline that I showed you uh, when we downloaded this from the national map is around here so it's missing some information and technically we don't want this we want everything to be black underneath here so in order to get rid of the, that edge artifacting because it looks like this was tiled together um, based on that prior image and we'll go back to that and take a look at it right now when I output this before doing this, I didn't correct for that, that black level. So you saw all that edge artifacting around the model when we brought, brought it in uh, to uh, VCarve and Aspire. So what I want to do here is I want to select a, a black area. And in this case, first, what we're going to do is click on our background here, go ahead and right mouse click and duplicate that layer and hit OK. And we'll turn off our background. So now that I have a background copy, I want to come over here and use the magic wand tool and make sure you set your tolerance down to about two pixels or so. That usually works really well. And what I want to do is just grab an area and click right in here close to the edge. And it should outline all of the area around the island. And you can see where that's the case. And it's also around the edges. And so we'll just go ahead and hit delete and we'll get rid of that. And I'm going to hit command D on the Mac. And in this case, I will, I, sometimes it's easy just to use the eraser tool. Um, so we'll just erase this. I'll set this up to a huge, huge value brush there with my brackets. And the opacity of flow is at 100%, so that's good. And we'll just go through here and erase all of this. Okay, so I'm going to erase all of that. And what I'm doing here in Photoshop, you can do in GIMP as well. The same, same principle applies. So now that we have that, I'll go ahead and, and create another layer. I'll click on my background layer here and just come up and uh, we can do a new layer so I'll just go layer new just regular layer layer one and that's below my layer here and I'll just turn off the background copy 
and come down and reset my uh, foreground background to a black and that's a black and I'll go to the paint bucket and I'll just paint this background black now that's a pure black and I'll go ahead and click on this background copy and there it is now we're almost done with this process and what we want to do here before anything is crop this image down because there's going to be some tool pathing that comes through and creates a rough tool path uh, around the island and, and this whole entire area and then there's a finished tool path which will run at a 45 degree angle so you'll see that coming up but that goes back and forth across all of this area so if we eliminate all this black area down below here we can decrease our production time by making sure that we don't waste uh, movement on the CNC machine. So what I'll do is just come up and we'll do a crop. I'm going to go ahead and crop this image. It looks good for the top there, but on the bottom, I think it probably needs to be something like that. And we'll just go ahead and hit uh, that and crop it. And this is now our image. So let me get that set up here. And that looks pretty good. Now, the one thing that we might want to do that helps a lot in terms of getting a really great model, a really smooth model, is to take this background copy we just made and go ahead and just, um, we'll just duplicate that layer and I'll hit OK. I'm going to switch off the background copy and I'm going to call this new one uh, Blurred. OK. And now that we're calling it Blurred, let's blur it. Let's go in here, come up into our filters, come down to our blur, and we're going to do a, a Gaussian blur. So I'll select that. And this one right now has a radius of 12 pixels, but I think we want more like, say, 20. So I'll put a 20 pixel in there, and we'll see what that looks like. So there it blurred it. So let's compare. So this is our blurred image and this is our clean image so just a little bit of blurring will help the the tool just sort of uh, not be so precise but it's not going to lose detail so there you go okay so now I'm gonna go ahead and click on my blurred copy right there and you can see where we had this um, labeled as Catalina QGIS 900 DPI and what we're gonna name this one is as we'll go to file I'm going to export this as a, as a JPEG and I'm just going to call this 900 DPI and blurred and I'm going to mark this one for this tutorial. All right, and I'll save that to the desktop and save. And now we have a great image to bring in to uh, VCarve and Aspire uh, to make this terrain model. So let's do that next. Okay, so I've opened up Aspire, or you could use VCarve, and I set the project up at 20 inches by 20 inches by one and a quarter with the material on the top, and we'll switch the datum to the center and hit OK. And there's our 20 by 20. And what I want to do is create a vector, just randomly open up and create a vector. And this one I'm going to size out at 18 inches by 18 inches. And we'll hit apply and then I'll center this vector by selecting it and we'll just go ahead and hit the center center it out and we're good to go next up we'll go ahead and switch over to the modeling tab and the 3d view and we'll go ahead and click that to import this image so we're going to import this image as a bitmap and that's our 900 dpi image and it'll take a few few seconds for it to load because it's a large image so once it does load you'll you might notice that it it's a little strange it doesn't look right but if we check out the 2d view you can see where it centered out in the datum right there and what we really want to do is decrease the size of this image it was a 900 dpi to start so we had a really high quality large image to work with and so I'll just sort of resize it to kind of fit inside of this box a little better. 
and then we'll go ahead and, and actually select that image and scale it and just type in the numbers. I think we want this one at about 17 inches. So I'll do 17. The height will fall out where it will. Hit apply and we're good to go. And I'm going to move this up just a little bit. And there it is. All right. So now when you take a look in the 3D view, you can see where we have a perfect model. We got rid of all that um, edge artifacting. And if we come up into the view and use shading, the shadow shading, that really brings it out. So you can really tell that it's going to be a good carving and very, very minimal uh, edge artifacting, which is great. Now, before we get any further, what we probably want to do is, is go to the tool paths and we'll go ahead and pin that open so it stays open and set up the material. Our thickness is about a one and a quarter inch and our position is, is at the top. And the model thickness right now is at, you know, 0.26. And I really want this to be about a half inch. So I'll type in 0.5 and hit apply. And that should give it quite a bit more definition. So now this model is ready to be handed off to Rob, our toolpath guru, and he'll walk us through the rest of the process about setting up some toolpaths. Once our bitmap has been imported, we're going to go ahead and commence with adding some vectors. We're going to begin with selecting our bitmap, and then from there we're going to go to trace bitmap. Go ahead and adjust the settings to fit your need. I'm just going to go ahead and darken it a bit more so we can see the outline. And then once I do, I'm going to hit preview, apply. An extra vector was created in the inside here on your white shadow here. We don't need that. We're going to go ahead and just select it and delete it. Once we have done that, I'm going to select the outside perimeter vector, go into offsets and layouts, go into offsets. I'm going to go inward first a quarter of an inch. Hit offset, then I'm going to select our outside vector here, and I'm going to go ahead and go one inch. Once that's been done, go ahead and hit close. All right, so now we're going to go over our toolpath. First thing we're going to do is are going to be our roughing toolpath. Once here, we're going to select our bit. We are going to go ahead and be using a quarter inch. Our settings are set for our tools, so make sure you double check your settings. Once you have done that, go ahead and hit select. We are basically going through the model boundary, checked on. All right, we're going to go down here. Everything's going to be great, except for right here, we do want to add a ramp. So go ahead and put 0.25. Select your bitmap and go ahead and hit calculate. Once you've done that, go ahead and play your preview and our roughing has now been done. Next, we're going to go ahead and go to your 2D view close on the right hand side and we're going to go on proceeding with the finishing. Once in the finishing we are going to select our tool. If you want go ahead and uh, this is going to be the tool parameters here. Make sure they fit to your need as well. Hit OK. Scroll down and the setting we're going to change up is going to be the rastering at a 45 degree. Select your bitmap and now hit calculate. Once that has been done, go ahead and hit play so you can see your preview. All right, looking great so far. Last and final thing we're going to do is go head back to the 2D view. Select the two vectors we created earlier. Hold down shift to multi-select. We're going to go back to the right hand side, hit close here. We're going to use the pocket tool path. Our cut depth is going to be 0.05 and we're going to use the same quarter inch end mill. It it is going to take it in four passes and we're just going to do an offset by checking on ramps here of a quarter of an inch. All that seems good. We're going to go down and hit calculate. Go ahead and press play to see our final work here. That's going to be it right there. All right, so before we get started on um, saving our tool paths, the best thing to do is go up to the main menu, machine and update post processor database. And what that'll do is update the post processors and it'll give us a choice that we can choose on um, how we're gonna save our, uh, 
our G code, our, our tool paths. So here you can see where we have our tool paths. And if you go over to save a tool path, see we're going to save the selected tool path. And desktop is fine if you don't have any other machines. And what we need to do is select a post processor. So if you click on the little editing icon, you'll come up with your machine configuration. Go over to the add a post processor and just type L into the overall window there. Choose the Laguna Creator and there you go. And then once it comes up, hit apply and then OK. And that'll add that, that processor right into our database there. So we'll choose that one. And now we can start saving our tool paths. And in this case, we'll just save them one by one. We already did this process and labeled ours um, cat one, cat two, and, and cat three. So it's a real easy process. Just go through and save those tool paths to a, a thumb drive or to your desktop. Ultimately, they'll need to be on a thumb drive so we can transfer them to the machine. And we're good to go. So just save your tool paths and we'll get on with the next part with Rob showing us how to use the controller for the Laguna Creator Pro and we'll learn a little bit more about how to operate the machine. All right, first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and install our puck here. So we're gonna go ahead and grab this wire here and connect it to the back port. Once we have our putt connected, we're gonna go ahead and move the spindle over top of it. And we're also gonna go ahead and lower the Z just a bit. We're gonna go ahead and grab the, go ahead and grab the puck. Once we do that, we're gonna go ahead and hit two buttons at the same time. That's gonna be menu and spindle. Now we could go ahead and disconnect our puck. All right, we're gonna go ahead and manually jog our machine to the designated origin that we would like it to start. Once in position, go ahead and press X, Y, zero. We're gonna go ahead and insert our USB to the top port. Open the dust cover, insert the USB. Now we're gonna go ahead and copy the file to the internal memory. So we're gonna go ahead and press menu. Go down to operate files using the X negative. Press okay. Now we're gonna hit copy files, press okay again. U disk, we're gonna press okay. And we're gonna go ahead and go down with X negative to find cat one, hit okay. Perfect, hit okay one more time. And then we're gonna look for cat two, press okay. Second time, perfect. Now we're gonna hit stop cancel to we're back into our main menu. At this point, you could also go ahead and disconnect the USB. Put the dust cover back on and we're ready to go. In this part, we're gonna go ahead and run cat one first. So in order to do that, we're gonna press run pause delete. Go down with X negative to internal files, press okay. We're gonna look for cat one which should be your first one here and from this point we're going to press ok All right, now we're gonna go ahead and run the second part of this as well, which is gonna be the 3D roughing. So we're gonna go ahead and press run, pause, delete, go down to internal, hit okay. Then we're gonna go down to cat two, hit okay. And one more time, that's just basically 
factory settings, go ahead and hit OK one more time and it's going to go ahead and start off now. Alright, well there it is, and we hope this video helps you make some great terrain models on your Creator Series CNC machine. You can find the Creator Series on the Laguna website under the Industrial Desktop CNC tab, or you can feel free to give us a call anytime at 1-800-234-1976.